and I associate myself with basically everything that's been said here today. It's been uh, uh, remarkably um, Good morning. agreeable, which is uh, really pleasant and surprising. So I hope that we can work together to, to try to bring clarity and, and uh, rectification of these problems. So here's my, uh, my first question goes to, to uh, Ms. Burton. This is for you. Um, you. You said in your written report, because information is in a cloud storage bin rather than a file cabinet, and this is, by the way, this was it, iterated by every witness, uh, the government should have no greater investigative and secrecy interest due to the case of ac uh, due to the ease of access. So I guess my question is, if, if you were the DOJ or government, how would you respond to, to that? Because, I mean, that's the blanket statement is that, that there is no greater just because it's easier to, to claim secrecy, there's no greater cost. How would, how would you respond if you were DOJ uh, to that? I mean, if I were the Attorney General, and I think he's headed in this direction, I would want to be uh, responsible as a citizen of the country to balance all rights and all needs. And that's why we have judges. That's why we have notice. Uh, that's why we should not be putting our cloud providers uh, effectively above the Constitution. Uh, as you say, Microsoft uh, makes some efforts in this regard, but that is not universally the issue. And um, I would tell you there's a lot of things we don't know right now. And if I'm the DOJ, I don't want to be convicting people or bringing cases uh, where I can't defend in full measure the evidence that I put before a court and give someone the right to, to challenge that. I think that's just, you know, playing, um, you know, uh, should we say, uh, pro ball in a bad way. Well, it, it I, I don't disagree, but I, I, I haven't heard basically from any of the witnesses, nor have we seen in practice over years, that DOJ really is, is concerned with being a pristine, pristinely good due process uh, uh, adherence and, and protecting the rights of everybody. I mean, we, 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 you've, you've all iterated examples where they've abused their, this authority, and, and Mr. Burt, this is coming in to your, your shop 3,500 times a year, and so we're led to believe that this could be many thousands of times. So you've given your, your set of, uh, of uh, prescriptions as well, but why, why do you think it should be, I mean, uh, in a physical warrant, uh, when physical material is being seized, it's 30-day, if it's going to be secret, it's 30-day per statute. Why do you think it should be 90-day for, for a data? That's a very good question, and um, any reasonable time is acceptable to us and I think to the technology industry. What we're trying to do is rein in what we have seen, which are indefinite secrecy orders that have no termination date. What we've seen since the um, DOJ formulated its policy in response to litigation that we filed back in 2017, we've actually seen a somewhat of a decrease in those indefinite um, orders, but we still get hundreds of those every year. The standard that we see typically is a year, and that's just far too long a time period, even when it's actually justified to have a secrecy order. So our response would be, there's a very small universe of truly justified secrecy orders. Where those secrecy orders are truly justified, then as long as 90 days might actually be acceptable. So, so um, I just have, just about a minute left, and I would like each of you to respond to this, because each of you have talked about, one way or another, reliance on the courts as, as arbiters here, and yet um, they, they seem to be just rubber stamping boilerplate language. I am concerned uh, about what I, would, I view as a necessary stick approach to DOJ for their abuse. What is the what is an appropriate punitive measure? I mean, if in a regular criminal case with physical evidence, you're going to have um, the exclusionary uh, issues that will come in if there's fruit of the poison tree, et cetera. What happens here? What is the punitive measure that devolves to, uh, to bad actors? DOJ, Mr. Tur Professor Turley, we'll go over with you and then right down the table. And then, uh, well, I, I, I certainly agree with your point that the courts have not exactly covered themselves in glory. And part of the problem here is that these judges are getting thousands of these things and they don't want to go into the, in, into the weeds on some of these issues. And so you have cases like NRA Grand Jury out of the ED uh, New York, 
uh, that are saying, look, this is just boilerplate. We're just getting boilerplate over and over again, uh, and that's not saying anything. You're going to have to structure what a court has to find and what a court must establish in writing if we're going to be able to do anything. And I think you have to establish standing and an appellate procedure with adversarial process. Those are the things that, that will result in a change. The gentleman's time has expired, Ms. Jackson Lee.